In today's video, we're trying out several experiments with Ublek that you guys wanted to see. What happens when you put it in a vacuum chamber, dry ice, a deep fryer, or drop a large blob of it from a really high height. Guys, Ublek is something that I think most of you are familiar with by now. It's a combination of cornstarch and water. It forms a non-Newtonian fluid. A Newtonian fluid is one that retains the same rigidity regardless of what pressure and stress is put on it. Non-Newtonian fluids are ones that change when you put stresses or pressure on them. Cornstarch and water mixes together to form what's commonly called Ublek, which is a liquid that's pretty runny if it's just sitting there or not disturbed, but when you add a lot of pressure or something pushing on it or pouring it, it changes and it thickens up considerably. It becomes almost a solid, and it doesn't change its shape. And then as soon as you stop putting pressure on it, it just liquefies and melts again. Most people are familiar with this, but we've had a ton of comment requests asking to see a few different things. So we're gonna try out four of those today. We're gonna mix up some Ublek. We're going to put it in our vacuum chamber and see what it does. We've got some dry ice, and we're gonna try mixing it with the dry ice in a few different ways. We're gonna try pouring Ublek on top of the dry ice, putting dry ice on top of the Ublek, and then we've got a deep fryer, and we're gonna see what happens if we deep fry Ublek, and then we're gonna try mixing up a pretty big batch of it, and we're gonna drop it from about 35 to 40 feet up in the air to see what that blob does when it hits the ground. This should be fun. Let's get started mixing some of this up. Here's the basic idea. We've got four different things we're going to try with our Ublek. We're going to put it in a vacuum chamber, mix it with dry ice, throw it into our deep fryer, and then we're gonna drop a large blob of it from a pretty high height. I think first up, we're gonna try the vacuum chamber. So I'm gonna mix up some Ublek in this little glass jar here, add a little bit of coloring, and then we're gonna put it in the vacuum chamber and see what it does. So Ublek, for those of you who may not know, is named after a mysterious green goo that falls from the sky in a Dr. Seuss book that I think was written in 1949. Whatever color you go with, it ends up being a lot lighter, of course, because cornstarch is pretty opaque and very, very white. It's weird to try and mix Ublek because as soon as any of it starts to form, it doesn't like to stir anymore. All right, we've got a batch mixed up. Never a clean process making Ublek, but it's worth this stuff. I, I've been playing with this for 30 years, I think, and this stuff is still just really cool. I mean, this is a ball. I can just hold it. I can break it in half, pull pieces off of it. It turns into like almost a powder. And then of course, stop doing things to it and it just melts completely away. So we've now got our Ublek. Let's throw this into a vacuum chamber and see what it's gonna do. It looks like it's starting to raise a little bit in the container, exceed the space offered by our container. Yep, there we go. Oh boy. If you are trypophobic, you're not gonna like this one. I think we've caused the water to boil, pulling vapor out of it, and then that's just started to spread and coat the insides of the chamber. All right, we can't really see what's going on in there, so I'm gonna turn it off, break the seal. There's our Ublek down inside there. So far, behaving quite a bit like normal Ublek, but now it has bubbles in it and it can sort of break the bubbles and it's weird to break them because even the bubbles act like Ublek. When I poke them, they kind of shatter more than popping like a liquid. All right, second pass, it doesn't seem to be growing as much. I think we've pulled enough air out of it that it's staying settled a bit more, but it is still bubbling a lot at the top and it looks pretty cool because Again, as those bubbles raise up, it actually tries to harden around them just because that's a shear force pressing on it. It starts solidifying. It's cool to look at. This stuff that ran down the side, I think has dried out. I think the, uh, the vacuum pulled some of the water out of it, so it's no longer acting like Ublek. It's more of just dried cornstarch. And I think if we left our Ublek in the vacuum chamber long enough, it would actually end up boiling away all of the water from it, but that would probably take many, many hours. I just want to see if it's behaving like normal Ublek still. Still break pieces off of it. Still crumble it. And if I just hold it still, pretty similar. I think some of it may have thickened up more. I think that near the surface, it might have pulled enough moisture out that it didn't change into a liquid state as well when I stopped moving it around. But for the most part, you can see it's still melting pretty well. Hard force. Hard Ublek, Gentle Force, Soft Ublek. 
Next up, we're gonna take some of our oobleck, and I did add just a tiny bit more water to it, less than a teaspoon, I think, but just trying to put back what was taken out by the vacuum chamber. The spoon like cuts into it rather than just sliding into it. First, let's see, I'm just gonna take a little piece of dry ice, and I'm gonna set it on top of the oobleck and see if it does anything. Started getting pulled in a little bit. Not very far, it sunk tiny bit into the surface and then kind of stayed there. I think it might just float. I'm trying to get it completely covered, but of course it doesn't want to get completely covered because it's constantly putting off carbon dioxide gas. All right, that was a tiny piece of dry ice, and I put that on top of the oobleck. Now I'm going to take some slightly larger pieces, and I'm going to pour a bunch of the oobleck on top of it, if I can. But I'm just going to keep trying to scoop it out and clump it on. So now I've got several chunks of dry ice underneath this oobleck here. Definitely looks like a living creature or a weird gas-producing swamp. Pretty neat. This seems like the kind of thing you could use as a special effect in a movie. Big old bubbles grow, and then they break. Very cool, I like that swamp effect. One more thing I wanna try, I'm just gonna take some of our oobleck here and I'm just gonna set it on top of a slightly larger block of dry ice and see what that does. Let that puddle right there. Now it's frozen, so I just have like a solid piece of oobleck, which I can break and it doesn't turn into a liquid as I stop messing with it because it's just too cold. It'll warm up and probably turn right back into its normal oobleck-y self. All right, our fry oil is nice and hot. So I am going to see what happens if I just dribble some oobleck into our deep fryer. I am a little bit concerned because oobleck, obviously, is about half water. Well, water and fry oil don't always mix so well, but let's find out. After a couple of seconds, well, I think it started to drip down through the basket some. I think I saw some on the very bottom of our fryer. Not as violent of a reaction as I was afraid might happen. There hasn't been any popping or exploding. That looks pretty interesting. Let's see. That no longer seems to be acting like oobleck either. I think that has fundamentally changed nature. Let's see what happened to the stuff that oozed its way down through the basket. But again, it's no longer oobleck. Something has been done to it. More of like a gummy, bread-like consistency now. It's actually kind of translucent where it's pretty thin. You can see my glove through it. It should just be cornstarch and food coloring. So I'm gonna see if it has any taste. It might taste like oil. Surprise, surprise, it's very starchy. We deep fried this and I think the outside solidified. I'm curious if there's still normal oobleck on the inside. Tear that open. You can certainly see the layers, the difference between where did and did not cook. That's pretty interesting. I think it's still dried out enough that while that may be uncooked cornstarch, it's not oobleck because there's not enough water content in it. We've got our big old bowl of oobleck here. We're gonna take it up as high as this thing goes. That's about 35 feet. I'm gonna get as much of this out into my hands as I can. It's tricky because pouring oobleck doesn't always work so great. The, the pouring action as we've said, can cause it to thicken up already. So I'm gonna try and scoop out as much as I can, get as big of a ball as I can, and then just drop it right off. See what it does on impact. You guys ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> it exploded everywhere. Three, two, one. We're gonna try this one more time. We actually just scraped the oobleck off the ground, added a little bit more water to it because it started drying out in the sun and on the hot concrete, but Got the big blob again, at least mostly the same size as before. 
And we're just gonna go for one more drop. I think we didn't quite like the framing of the, uh, the high frame rate before. So here goes again. Three, two, one. That is a great demonstration of what happens to Ublek under really high levels of stress. We know under low levels of stress it hardens up. Being dropped, apparently that's enough for it to really start shattering. It's sort of a cross between a splash and a shatter. It's really fun to watch. And then of course, like after it hits the ground, there's like a pile of dust, which just melts down into a pile of goo. It's really fun to see the contrast. There you go guys, Ublek in a vacuum chamber with dry ice, deep fried, and a large blob of it dropped from a high height. Looks pretty cool. These are all your suggestions. We've been going through comments, looking for things that you guys want to see, and this is one that popped up with a lot of responses. Like everything we tried today, a bunch of people requested to see. So that's why we did it, because you guys wanted to see it, and it was really fun to see what it's going to do. Guys, that's all for today, but we've always got more for you to see. Click the box at the top to check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.